Let's talk now to Sir Peter Soulsby, Mayor of Leicester. Uh, we were just listening to a reporter there for Seek for Truth, uh, talking about what's going on up there. Sir Peter, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Um, it seems a rather complex issue this we've just had it explained to us that one of the problems with um, the communities in Leicester at the moment is that there's been a, a bit of an influx of of people coming from a particular part of India who might have accessed uh, EU passports because they are Portuguese nationals as well is that the case uh, Mike I, I mean I think what uh, we've got here is uh, things issues being brought into Leicester that really have absolutely nothing at all to do with Leicester right. Uh, and, you know, that's a matter of frustration to me, a lot of anger to uh, to local people, mm. and uh, a lot of local people are very baffled uh, by what uh, are obviously things that uh, are important in the subcontinent of India, but uh, really have no place yeah. in, uh, in modern Leicester. But are these things being brought in by people from the subcontinent? Because that's what we're being told, and it seems to me, uh, and I've been visiting Leicester for many years, I once saw the Who at the Granby Halls many years ago, um, and stayed in the Holiday Inn. You know, it's a great city and it's always been uh, a very ethnic city it was then yeah. um and i would say that you know for decades muslims and, and hindus have lived side by side without any problems at all and they still do i mean that's you know that's what we've got here uh is uh oh, a few hundred uh, young men and they are all men and yeah. they're all young for the most part you know uh who uh, have chosen leicester as a bit of a battleground yeah. uh I, I was really interested in uh, some of the uh, figures that came back from the police uh, about the ones that they arrested yeah now, it's not a cross-section of those involved, but it does give you an indication. And of the 18 that arrested, eight uh, came from outside of the city, right. uh, from Birmingham, from Solihull, from London. Um, and, you know, it does suggest that uh, people, for whatever reason, you know, have, have chosen uh, Leicester as a, a good place mm. for a battle about issues that have got nothing whatsoever to do yeah. with Leicester. Uh, and I, I, you know, I think you know the fact is. You, you say, I mean, you know Leicester well. Um, you know, I, you know Leicester is somewhere that uh, you know. Of course, you know, community relations you know, always have tensions and so on. But you know, we do pride ourselves on the fact that uh, uh, you know different communities do get on incredibly well. Work alongside of each other, collaborate together, talk to each other uh, in a way in Leicester that isn't the place, isn't the case everywhere else. Uh, and. Uh, it, that remains the case today. You know, we've got a few hundred uh, young lads who are uh, making a nuisance of themselves and quite a dangerous nuisance. Yeah. Well, that's uh, the thing. I mean, because, you know, some people who would perhaps be maybe apologists for what's happening would say, well, you know, football hooligans fight in the streets all the time in all parts of Britain. It's nothing to do with, with race. But this one clearly is to do with, as you said, uh, an issue which is an issue outside of this country, an issue in, in India and Pakistan. And if it's true... That, that a lot of these young men are coming to this country specifically uh, with the idea of doing something like this because they're coming from a place in, in Gujarat, I'm told, uh, where they've got Portuguese passports, then that needs to be investigated, doesn't it? No, they're coming from Birmingham. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean that, you know, that's... Uh, so you've not heard not. This, this this story about sort of the Portuguese-speaking goings, then? Do you, do, you know, do you know one of the most evident things of this is the extent to which stories on social media have been used to uh, to feed the uh, uh you know the people's perceptions of uh, you know of, of what's happening here in Leicester. the amount of disinformation in fact in some cases absolute lies that have uh, been shown you know on uh, on social media uh is is really quite alarming and yes i mean that's you know that's one of the things on social media and the police are particularly frustrated uh, because obviously, uh, you know, they've been trying to uh, put out the, uh, the, the the facts of what has and has not been happening in Leicester. Uh -huh. But of course, uh, you know, social media, it's pretty wild out there. No, and, of course. Uh, you know, no, you know, listen, I, 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 take, I, take, really I take your point. I mean, I'm not saying any of this because of what's been on social media. I'm saying it because of somebody that we spoke to who's been looking into what supposedly is happening there. Because if uh, eight of the 18 people arrested were from elsewhere, then 10 of them were from Leicester. And so oh, presumably, yeah. presumably they're living in Leicester. They've been brought up there by their parents who may be first or second generation people living there as well. So, I mean, there's, it, it's not simply people from the outside, is it? Oh, no, I would, I'm not suggesting it was. I'm, I'm just uh, suggesting it's been fed by social media. It's been fueled by people coming from outside as well, of course, right. uh, for some young people in Leicester. But we are talking about a city of, what, 350,000, 360,000, uh, and, uh, you know, a few hundred people, mm. young young lads out on the streets making use of themselves. I'm not, gonna, I'm not trying to diminish it, you know, because obviously that is uh, something that, uh, you know, is worrying for us. Uh, it's not good for uh, the people who have to... Uh, you know, live in the surrounding streets, and it's not good for the reputation no. of the city. But no, it's really not. 
Yeah, but I, th- but I, th- I think you have to, have, to, have to keep it in proportion. Well, we are keeping it in proportion. We haven't led the show with it, uh, no. which we might have done if it was even, even worse than it currently is. But if you're a shopkeeper in one of these streets that we're looking at now on the screen, you must be a bit worried that somebody's going to throw a brick through your window uh, or set fire to your car uh, or something like that. So, so any kind of lawlessness of, of any kind is a concern um, because it, yeah. could, cause it could get worse. Absolutely. But you just watch that video there and, and just see how effectively the police were in there. Yeah. Uh, and now they've got enough people on the ground. And of course, you know, it, 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 it took a while, I think, for, uh, for them to, to realise just, you know, how serious this could be. But as soon as they did realise, they got the people on the ground and they have been very, very effective in stopping it. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very confident uh, that, uh, you know, they're not going to let a few hundred lads uh, disrupt our city and cause undoubted distress. Uh, to to local people and indeed damage to local mm. business. And, and if, you can see and that. If, and if he, I was just going to say, I mean, you can see there that uh, as, you know initially that's very few police mm. dealing with a, a, a difficult situation. Yeah. That's also that's also one that's a one video. I've seen other videos, Peter, yeah. which yeah, have been yeah, taking, yeah, but, taking place but, at night, but, which are a lot different. You know. Yeah, but but, but if you see the videos of, 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 of you know what's happened subsequent to that. You know, they're quite clearly they were outnumbered. Yeah, you know, it's very, very obvious how you just just got to see what's happening, um, and and were therefore limited in what they can do. They responded very quickly to call in enough people to make sure they're not outnumbered. Yeah. Uh, and subsequently, yeah, they've done a lot of arrests, but they've also uh, stopped any disturbances. Yeah. But if these are very uh, unrepresentative of, say, the Hindu and Muslim communities in Leicester, what are the community leaders of those two groups doing to stop it from continuing? Uh, I think they're doing their very, very best uh, to use their influence to stop it happening. But you've got to recognise that, uh, you know, obviously we're talking about more established, older people in, in, the, in the communities who've lived here for a long time, who are you know, very much committed to uh, the, uh, the very good relations that we've got in Leicester. And of course, uh, you know, being a parent myself, you know, our, our ability to influence uh, young lads uh, in their uh, late teens and early 20s uh, is perhaps, mm. uh, you know, not as uh, as absolute as it might be. And, no. reason, and what are and most reason, of these kids... doesn't always work. What are most of these kids doing? Are they do, Are they at university? Are they working? Do they have jobs? What are, are they unemployed? What are they, what are they doing? Well, I think we'll find out as the, uh, as the uh, you know, as the, as the charges go through, uh, you know, find out the ba- their backgrounds. But, uh, you know, as far as I could tell, they're fairly... Uh, Normal cross section mm. uh, of, uh, of kids of that age who uh, have found uh, uh, pretext excuses to come onto the streets and uh, and, and, and make a, a nuisance of themselves and have a bit of a fight. Yeah, I mean, you say that you're confident Leicester is resilient uh, and it will return to normal relations very soon. How soon? Oh, very soon. I mean, that's all I can say. Soon, I mean, like yeah, tomorrow, I mean, like I mean, tonight. I mean, I, mean, I, 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 I can't guarantee that uh, what the police are doing uh, will entirely clamp down on this. I've got enormous uh, admiration uh, and have taken a, a lot of injuries themselves. I think it was about 16, uh, in, in, you know, uh, police injured. Uh, but I'm very, very confident their ability to prevent further disorder and to put necessary resources into making that happen. And I'm also very confident that uh, the very well-established communities in Leicester uh, are uh, going to wish to uh, ensure uh, that uh, they can do all they can to uh, to prevent uh, any repeat of this and to uh, ensure that any damage between communities is minimised and repaired. Mm. Have you got any worries at all, Sir Peter, that this might get a lot worse before it gets better? Mm. I might regret saying this, but but, but actually I believe the police are, are on top of it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I certainly believe that uh, there's a strong commitment from the those who are established in Leicester, you know, to uh, to make sure that it doesn't get any worse. Mm. Uh, you know, but, but of course, it's, it's it's a worrying time for you know city. I mean, nobody likes having this sort of thing happening in their uh, in their streets. And uh, you know, I, I very much hope that it will uh, very soon uh, pass, and that we will very quickly uh, get about the business of repairing the damage. So, Peter Salisbury, Mayor of Leicester, thank you very much indeed.